and a guy that don't want none unless you got buns, hun. Hey guys. Yeah. 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 Do you ever think of like how devastating the Great Chicago Fire was and how like it had a huge impact on the history of our city? Yeah, I sometimes. Think about, like, I once in like, a while. All the time. <clears throat> I'm thinking that maybe we should head downtown and kind of explore the city and see what impact the Gilded Age had on Chicago. Tomorrow? I'm thinking right now. Let's go. That's a good Let's idea. Do Let's do it. Go. Guys, I think we forgot something. We forgot Lily. I think she got in the wrong car. From the CEO representing so so. 20th century construction focused on the geography of water supplies, sewage disposal, and urban transportation. They came up with an elaborate plan to work with all of these characteristics. This plan embodied the City Beautiful movement, an urban planning philosophy demonstrated by the fairgrounds on the 1983 Columbian Exposition that cities should be clean, orderly, ornate, attractive places for all citizens. The plan of Chicago proposed a dense network of subway lines in the central area with additional subway and elevated lines radiating out into the neighborhoods. Chicago's architects worked to meet the demands of commercial businessmen. Businessmen preferred the plain looking buildings because putting fancy ornaments on them costs more money. This streamlined style became known as the Chicago School of Architecture. William LeBaron Jenny, Daniel Burnham, John W. Root, Lewis Sullivan, and Dayton Kumar Adler are some of the most well-known Chicago School architects. Maybe Lily's hanging out with them as well as Daniel Burnham. Didn't tell ya. We'll go find out. Oh, the girls recognizing these dudes too. I'm the flyest thing walking through junior high school. So make room next to your little backstreet post. Cause Bow Wow Z and it's over. You heard I'm this, I'm that. About the uh, team or no, the Great no, Chicago, Chicago Fire. Fire. Oh, back in the day. Not very much. Just about a cow knocking over a lantern. Yeah, they did what the cow. That's all. That's what they. It was started by a cow. After the Chicago Fire, what I do know is that they had to rebuild most of the city, and that's why it's in the grid system. The City Beautiful movement, led by Frederick Law Olmsted, all began with the Chicago Fire in 1871. The fire, which leveled the entire city, allowed for the nation's best architects, such as Daniel Burnham, to recreate the Chicago, making it more functional and beautiful. New modernized Chicago in the city beautiful fashion promoted aesthetic beauty and civic virtue among urban populations. So here we are in the Windy City. We're sh out trying to find Lily. We think she's out hanging out with Daniel Burham. I don't know. She said she's doing something with City Beautiful. City Beautiful. She's but here obsessed. we are. Here we are museum. looking at the Field Museum. Interesting fact, the Field Museum and its collections originated from the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition and so, the artifacts displayed at the fair. It was originally titled the Columbian Museum of Chicago in honor of its origins. It was, it's an exhibition of artifacts illustrate art, archaeology, <laughs> science, and history. Whoa. Wow, it's cold here. It's so cold. Lily, you're going to need to be somewhere warmer. Lily, I don't you probably know what to go tell inside. You. Um, but anyway, in 1905, the museum's name was changed to the Field Museum of Natural History to honor the museum's first major benefactor, Marshall Field, and to better reflect the focus on natural sciences. Burnham and Bennett, the architects of the 1909 Plan of Chicago, urged the development of the lakefront as park space to the greatest possible extent. Ride no doves, I've been seen with the bats, heard with the best, and I got it locked down from the east to the west. Look in my eyes, y'all know I ain't playing, that's why all through the streets all I hear saying is, wow, 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 yippee yo, yippee yay. Alright, we're here at the water tower, and it's one of the only buildings that survived the Chicago fire. Lily, are you out there?
The Industrial Revolution was replacing American society with an urban economic boom. Cities were the focus of American enterprise, and people flocked towards manufacturing centers as jobs in industry replaced jobs in agriculture. That's very true. Look at all this industrial stuff. Paige, Daniel did do that. Just look at all this industrial stuff anyway. <laughs> oh my god, stop. Where are my dogs at? Ball to me now. Bow wow wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. Lily, I'm here in this bus shelter. It smells strongly of marijuana. Please tell us where you are. Give us a hint. We're missing in action. The gang is all looking for you, girl. Lily, <laughs> where are you? This is me and Maddie. We're about to go on a bridge. Okay. So, by 1871, the city had 27 movable bridges. And that's when they started coming up with the bridges that go like this. So the cars and the So what we're on right now. Uh, the first bridge was built in 1902. And it remains at Court Portland, Portland Street. Street today. The new design proved to be more efficient to operate and eventually moved underneath the road deck altogether. Wow, that's really cool. I think the bridges made transportation much more easier for them and it's still useful today. Yeah, sure. Chicago. Props, beautiful. The plan of Chicago proposed a dense network of subway lines in the central area with the additional subway and elevated lines radiating out into the neighborhoods. On June 6, 1892, the Chicago and the South Side Rapid Transit Railroad, Chicago's first L line, went into operation. Chicago's L was apparently the third longest metropolitan railway in the world. Olmsted created beautiful terraces and grand pedestrian along with this is one of the finest examples of Olmsted's blend of the naturalistic landscaping and large public buildings. The site that, so, that was selected wasn't his original choice, however, but because of the transportation needs at the time, the eventual site won. Yeah, Tech City! Wait, guys, I forgot my ointment! <laughs> It's astounding, time is fleeting, madness takes its toll, but listen closely. Not for very much longer. I've got to keep control. Oh shoot, I oh. think I went through the wrong door. <laughs> What a beautiful violin we have here. You know, this reminds me of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Uh, for nearly 14 years, the Chicago Orchestra performed at the Auditorium Theater. The Orchestra Hall was designed by Chicago Symphony Orchestra trustee and Chicago architect Daniel Burnham. The architecture displayed beauty while enhancing the viewer experience by utilizing new technology. It's important to realize that at this point in American history, there was a new emerging working class who really had an emphasis on recreational activities like going out to the orchestra. What else is there to explore? Oh, wow, check out this artifact from the past. From the personal diary of Frederick Law Olmsted. Today was awesome. Me and my best architect friend, Daniel Burnham, got to reveal the World's Fair to the public. As I've previously mentioned, I was hired as the site designer and Burnham was the overseer of the project. I'm so amped. Not only did it popularize the City Beautiful movement and display modern architecture, but it introduced a distinct American culture and helped to develop a unique American pride. Wow. I'm running out of oxygen. Are these walls airtight? Very 
ready? Yoga, but she it. should be back in about. She said she was gonna do two classes, so two hours. Okay, she just right. left. All right, well, thank you. She'll be really sorry she missed you though. She didn't do anything like social all weekend. So. Oh. <laughs> all right, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lily, maybe you're at yoga in here. Lily, have you seen Lily anywhere? No, I haven't. Sorry. Oh. Chicago is a big city. Yeah, yeah. I forgot my headgear. <laughs> yeah, we're really close. Yeah. Hey. We'll find her. Hey, we'll China find her. 